verify the trig identity, cosine of x plus y times cosine of x minus y equals cosine squared of x minus sine squared of y. Now, we're gonna approach this two steps. The first step, I just wanna go from the left-hand side to the right-hand side by hook or crook. Okay, we just wanna get to our answer without worrying about writing things down nicely. Then, in the second part, we'll write ourselves a proof of the trig identity showing all the steps. Okay, first part. So what do we have? On the left-hand side, I have cosine of x plus y times cosine of x minus y. So we have cosine of a sum. Okay, either with that memorized or we look it up, that's gonna be cos cos minus sine sine. So I'll write that out. For the difference, again, either I have it memorized or I look it up. In this case, if I have the sum, I'm halfway there. So again, we can use cos cos minus sine sine, except instead of y, I'm gonna use minus y. So instead of x minus y, I write x plus minus y. Okay, we write that out. And then I note cosine's an even function, so that minus sine goes away. Sine is an odd function, so I pull it through. Let's go turn our minus sine to a plus. Now, if you notice, cosine x plus y times cosine x minus y. If you observe what kind of terms we have, we have a difference of two squares here. So I don't have to do a big multiplication. I could just square and then take the difference. So all we're looking at is gonna be cosine squared x, cosine squared y, minus sine squared x, sine squared y. Okay, just looking at that, I don't know how to proceed off the top of my head. So I go look at my answer to see if that gives me any direction. So if you notice, I wanna wind up getting a cosine squared of x by itself. I could do that if I had the term cosine squared x times sine squared of y. Okay, if we add that to our equation here, then I could collapse this thing down to a cosine squared of x because cosine squared of y plus sine squared of y is equal to one. Okay, bonus, we also wanna get minus sine squared of y. So if I add that term to the first part and then subtract that term off to clear out the zero, then we know that second term is gonna to contribute to get this term to collapse. So that's great. That's gonna get us to our answer. So, nope, how did we approach this? We started, we followed our nose, okay? You get stuck at some point, you look at your answer, you start working your way backwards. Next step, we write out the proof of our identity using all the details. First line, I just rewrite what we're trying to prove. So I wanna show cosine x plus y, cosine x minus y equals cosine squared x minus sine squared y. Next line, we pull down our cosine x plus y and invoke the sum angle formula. Okay, then we're gonna bring out the sum angle formula and apply it to cosine of x minus y. Here we're gonna apply it to x plus minus y and then we can get rid of the signs by invoking cosine of y being even, sine of y being odd. So that gets us to here. We multiply cosine x plus y, cosine x minus y. Then we note we have things set up. So we have a difference of two squares. So we invoke that. And that gets us to this step, which I'm gonna call star. Okay. To get any further past star, we're gonna add zero in the form cosine squared x, sine squared y, minus cosine squared x, sine squared y. Put that in the middle here. Then we can regroup, and then I'll be able to factor out a cosine squared x from our first term, sine squared y from our second term. Then to finish, we just note, okay, if I take cosine squared of an angle plus sine squared of an angle, we get one. Okay, over here, we can factor out a cosine squared x, leaves us with cosine squared y plus sine squared y. And then on the other one, we have cosine squared x plus sine squared x. So these are gonna collapse to cosine squared x minus sine squared y, which is what we were trying to prove.